G'day, Harry Houdini here from Australia and we are back with the little Skoda. Look at her. She's looking very pretty now. Oh yes. Started to get that uh, tri-colour camo scheme on her. You won't believe that's actually just hand painted. Trying out my new life colour paints and they are amazing. Little acrylics. Really good. I'm having so much fun now that I've got my airbrush. And um, I actually put the primer on that. That's acrylic as well. No oil has touched this tank's lips. Anyhow, um, that's just dry fitted together there at the bottom, so I'll be able to snap all that apart still to do some weathering, because I like to separate the tracks to, um, to put the weathering effects on them, and then I can weather up all the wheels and do everything else sort of in situ. More of that later. We won't be doing any painting this video, but you notice it's got a top on. Yes, I've just, um, just put those bits on. Um, it seemed easy enough just to get that assembled before I put the PE on because I went through my, um, my list from Edward. Uh, as you know, if you've seen the early videos, how I put all my little notes and I know this has got PE and that's got PE. Well, I realised I could do the basic assembly and that would not prevent me from adding the PE that I want to put on later. So I saved it for you. Yes, you get to see me uh, put the PE on this one. Oh, it should be easy. <laughs> Look, I always have that sort of feeling the bottom of my stomach before I start doing the PE, you know. Ooh. But look, got my wax pencil, got my slow setting zap glue. If you see my other videos, well, it all works and I'll show you again. Right, so I'm all organised before I start. I have got my folding tool, which I'll probably... Well, there's not a lot of folding in this, I don't think, but I will need the razor blade for um, cutting the parts out because that's my preferred method. I'll show you that in a sec. I have my wax pencil. And if you've seen my other videos, I go on and on about this. I cannot emphasize how much of an asset a wax pencil is when doing PE. And I'll show you that in a sec. You will be gobsmacked. Uh, of course, I've got my Edward PE. It's here. I've already got very familiar with where all the parts are. Um, Edward's instructions. They're pretty basic on this one. Not much to do now. I'm going to just do some work on the fenders and um, I'll show you that. There should be a minimal amount of shouting in that one. <laughs> and uh, zap glue. Now I don't use the normal CA glue uh, like you know super glue because it's too fast. Um, zap glue is a little thicker and it's a little slower so it gives me a lot more time and I can use just a tiny bit of it to get, um, to get done what I want but I've got that flexibility of being able to move the part around for a few seconds more before it sets. And I've got my bingo tickets more about them in a sec. Right, where are we up to? Okay, so initially there's a tiny little part here on the photo etch, which will be the first piece that I'll put on, and um, it's up in this top corner here, and it's just a little L-shaped piece that fits on one of the fenders. So let me show you how I go about that. If you've seen all this before, fast forward, there might be something a little more interesting down the track. Otherwise, for those people that um, do want to know, here we go. Now, first thing I'll do is, if you're cutting on your cutting board, right, you can't do this. If you cut your PE on that cutting board, it's got some springiness, and your PE will bend and buckle, and your edges will be all buggered, and your PE won't come out flat. And you'll have all kinds of trouble. Now, if you use, especially with Edward, they give you a nice stiff bit of, um, a nice stiff bit of, uh, Cardboard, or you could find something fairly hard. I mean, I've got running away from camera for two seconds. Oh, what have I got here? Right in the wood box, <laughs> I've got a nice hard board. So I could put my PE on that, and that's not too bad, that's reasonably hard, but my knife will go through it. Okay, but whatever you do, you've got to cut your PE on something pretty solid. Uh, glass is the best, glass is really what you want, you know. But if you haven't got glass, something hard, or at the worst, use a bit of very stiff cardboard like that provided in the kit by Edward. Now I, see what I'm doing? It's probably in the corner of the frame, I know. Up here, up, look up here. Um, rather than using my X-Acto knife to cut the brass, which will blunt and bugger that blade, and then I'll have to be changing X-Acto knife blades all the time, whereas that's better off being used on the soft plastic, um, I use a little razor blade that's been supplied in the um, photo etch bending 
kit. And um, the reason for that is it doesn't have to be a super sharp blade. It needs to have a reasonable point on it for folding, but it doesn't need to be actually cutting, um, you know, uh, we, I won't need a perfect uh, blade edge on it. Put your teeth in, Harry Hurdy, goodness me. I won't need a perfect edge on it for like trimming plastic. I can just use this to cut away. Now, what's better, and I should get hold of, apparently little micro um, snippers. I might get some of those and try them down the track. But anyway, they really do the trick. They're really super hard and super sharp, and they cut through pea like butter. But this is what I'm going to do today. So, here we go. Which part am I doing? Part number two. Part number two, right. So, very carefully getting in there with a the razor blade. I'm cutting this away from the fret. And it shouldn't buckle if I do it properly. Still have the problem of the knife or the blade dipping into the, um, to the wood. So even wood's not as preferable as I probably should have cut it still on the card because it has lifted a tiny little bit there. So even there, you know, the this although it's firm, the thing is your knife is going right in. Glass is what you want because your blade's not going to go in, and glass is just the best thing to cut on. I'm going to have to find my piece of glass. Lost it after I moved. Be around somewhere. All right. So there's my little itty bitty pit. Right now, tweezers? No, too hard. Bend the thing, bugger it off. You know, it'll end up all over the bloody place. That's just too much of a drama for me. I can't handle that. So what I do is I've got my little wax pencil. Did you see that? I just tapped it with my wax pencil. And oops, you don't want to be spinning it around too much. This is quite a big part. Uh, the wax pencil is better for um, really small parts. Is it? Um, can you see it's on there? It's on there. It's there. All right, here we go. In the studio view, will realise this is the other side. And that's because I didn't have enough light before and I uh, nearly buggered it up trying to do it to video. But anyhow, let me show you how this should be done. So I've got my little part. I've already, this one I haven't even bent. So I found it was better to um, merely put the CA glue on this one edge. It's because it's sort of a bendy, foldy one. It's a little bit different when you're just popping on one little piece, which I will do. So I've just done the end, used my wax pencil, pick that up, and I've only got to get it to that one end. All right, which is a lot easier, and then I can manipulate that into place and make sure I have got it anchored correctly, exactly how I want it before I even start. All right, so it's on there. Now, I could have folded it, but um, I realised being a curvy piece, well, um, I had a bit of a drama there before. I tried to put it on, the bloody thing fell off, and I got CA glue over my fingers, and I had to um, uh, clean up and start again. You didn't need to see that. I shouldn't have even told you. You never would have known. Uh, but anyhow, that's anchored to there, right? Now, once that's done, and this little CA glue over in my bingo ticket, it's still alive. It's, it's still active. Okay? So using my toothpick, which is the best method I've found to get this stuff on, I'll just put the tiniest bit. You know, you just don't put on much with a toothpick. You really don't. So it's, um, it's a wonderful way to do it. But now that that's locked in down there, I can... bend my little part... into place. Okay, so... Can you see it? Does it show up? All right. So it's easy as that. All right. Um, putting on single bits, if you see my other videos, is really easy. This was a little bendy foldy thing and I had to sort of um, figure that out a bit more. But like with any sort of part, like if you're putting ship rails on, you'd CA glue a tiny bit, just anchor it, and then you'd figure out how to glue the other pieces in. And that's that's sort of the rule for any big long sort of piece. You don't try and glue it all at once, Harry, you any bloody idiot. All right. There you go. Um, I'll do some of the simpler bits, um, and there are, you know, single pieces are a lot easier. I'll show you that. Well, those two fenders have now got their piece of photo etch on, and that um, that was fairly easy once I uh, did it the right way. Okay, um, 
I'm going to put a little bit of photo etch that goes on the front of the, um, the tank, but it needed a little plastic part that I forgot to put on. So, look at this. You can use your wax pencil to put on tiny little plastic parts as well. And being wax, it doesn't really stick. Uh, there's nothing much left there, or what's left is easily wiped off. It's not gooey, it's not abrasive, you don't have to sand it, you can just flick it off your fingernail, or even wipe it off with a little tissue. So this wax pencil is very useful. So I've got that little piece in there, and I can even use my pencil to position it. And if I tried to do that with tweezers, because this one is not only circular, it has an angle, it's, it's like a basically a truncated cone. So the tweezers might get it, but they'll they'll just slip over the top of it. Or you'll have it and then ping, it'll go off and it'll be in the bloody carpet monster. So again, sorry about that, again, wax pencil to the rescue. Now, I don't know if you know this trick as well. Um, you probably do. I'm probably you know, teaching your mother how to suck eggs here, but... Um, if I was to glue that in now, well, I'd have to take it out and pop it back in again, and you know, there's there's um, there's all kinds of dramas fraught with that. But because I've kept this whole thing um, basically as a dry fit, I can pop it in there, hold it, and I can glue it from the inside. Do you do that? All right. Now that's great because I'm. You saw how wobbly I was there. That's how wobbly I am, and I can get glue from asshole to bloody breakfast if I'm not careful. And so what I do is I look for methods that allow me to be a bit sloppery with the glue. I mean that's why I like this thing because it's got a little point on it. I've tried to use the the Tamiya one with a brush, and I'll tell you what, I get glue everywhere, as I said. So if doing a trick like this, I um, can glue it on the inside, or if I can somehow get the glue where it doesn't matter when I slop the part on, it doesn't matter if the glue spreads, that's what I need, and that's what I want. So there we go. That part is now perfectly glued into there, and there shouldn't be any splatteration at all. If you haven't been scared off by Photo Etch so far, and you shouldn't be, it, it's really it's really a matter of you taking charge, you know. You're in charge of Photo Etch, you don't let it, um, you don't let it boss you around. Now I need part 53. So 53 is... Um, Basically that one there, that looks like 53. So this time I am doing it as I normally do, on the white card. And it's a lot easier. Probably covering it up so you can't see. But that way there was no bending. All right? Did you hear the resounding clicks? There was no problems at all. The card on the, um, the um, cutting board seems to be the best method I've found, unless you've got glass. All right, so they're, um, it doesn't go that deep into the car, the, the blade, so that part's come out beautiful. There it is, it's perfect. And again, Mr. Wax Pencil, you can pick it up, and there it is. All right, it's ready for me to use. So checking my instructions, I need the dotty bit to the top, and I've got to fit that on the front of here. So hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing as I do it, and I'll be able to see what the bloody hell I'm doing. If that's the trouble with these videos, it's all very well when you do it yourself. When you're trying to do it to camera and your iPad's in your face, and oh, you know, you end up with a almighty god bloody horrible mess. So, tiniest bit of P of um, CA glue on here. And then I know that's got to be to the top, so I'll wax pencil pick it up from the top. So I know that's got to go onto there. And bingo bongo. if I was actually looking at it when I put it on, I would have probably seen the exact position to put it. And that's where the wax pencil is, is great. So you can position. That's, um, that's actually not too bad. But as you can see, you get a little bit of, well, you probably can't see. There's a little bit of faddling time. You get some time to play with the CA glue with Mr. Zap. So there we are. Right. So that little bit of photo etchy, he's on. He's fine. That's done. All right, so don't be scared of the stuff. You just need um, need some tools and you need a method, and that's my method, and it works for me, and I get things done very quickly. All right, I'm going to get on with this. Some people will ask me about this little foldy etchy tool and what it does, so I thought I'll show you one simple little piece. I've got this tiny little brass piece here, and all I'm going to do is fold up the tabs and the edges. And you could try and sit there with the pliers and do it, and you you might get it, but you'll um you invariably bugger it up. So um. 
I'm going to show you what I do on the machine. Now, Edward gives you little lines on there, which you, you won't see. I, I doubt you'll be able to see that. Do you see the little lines they give you? Probably not. But Edward gives you little lines, which is really handy, I found, because that's where you bend it. So, with your photo etchy tool, you just pop it in, and then position it. And I said, I'm using my wax pencil here, because that's the easiest way I've got of getting things right. You can also do it with um, with your toothpick, as long as your CA glue isn't wet. And the trick is to line it up just not on the line, but leave yourself a puff teeth. That's a tiny measure. Just that tiniest little bit outside of the line for it to bend. Because you try, if you do it right on the line, you've got to allow for the fact that the metal itself has to bend. So that's held there, and then the razor blade just goes in underneath and fold up and a tiny bit over because it'll always spring back. So that's that's how easy it is if you use your folding tool. Whereas you could be mucking around with a pair of pliers or trying to bend it with a you know your knife or whatever. And some people do very well. I've I've seen some of the builders do some great stuff. They just sort of hoe into the photo etch and do it. I can't. I'm too fumbly. So for me, I, I really like this tool because I can use it to um, get things exactly positioned how I want. I mean, you, you get quite proficient at using it. You get quite confident after a while. And you know that that's where you've got to put things. And you know, up she goes. Bend it. So you go vertical and then just a little bit more because it always springs back. And uh, out that comes. And I wonder if I can actually... I'll use the, yeah, uh, don't usually use the tweezers, but see, it's folded perfectly. Little edges, it's all done. So now that um, fits on the front of my tank. That goes, um, that's a little flap for one of the viewports that I'm going to put on. Yeah, just thought I'd show you how I use that. All my tools are easy to use. Nothing I do is complex. Nothing requires any great skill. Believe you me. All I look for are simple ways of doing stuff so I can get my model done. You can do it too. And here's where I've got to. The little Skoda's got some uh, photo etch on those front fenders, which has um, made it look a lot more snappy. And um, I've got, uh, there's a little piece we put on together and I've got the hatches on and I had to make a little brackety thing there for um, a searchlight, I assume. And that was a bit fiddly. There were three tiny little photo etch parts to go in there. Um, I don't think I can get very close with this this apparatus. But that's, you know, an hour or so's work in my evening. And I think the photo etch really sort of lifts your model. Just that little bit. And I haven't used everything. I omitted a few little pieces that I went, well, what's the point? The, um, the model's got detail there anyway, and there's not a lot more in the photo etch. And it's in some tiny corner where I wouldn't even see it. So I didn't bother. So I've just chosen what I wanted to do that was within my skill level and um, that's what I've done. And I'm happy with that. So there you go. That's the photo etch done on the front. I'll um, keep going, get it all done so next time I can uh, show you how the tank looks with everything on it. All right, that's it for now. So it's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harry Houdini. Mm -hmm.